Next up we have the vector mask. Now this works just like the layer mask except for one major difference. Let's do a hide all. Gives us white as you can see. Now the difference is that this mask is being run by vector shapes or vector graphics as opposed to being run by black and white paint. So I'll grab my little pen tool here. I'm just going to click on a few spots like this and make a little shape using the pen tool. There's my vector based shape and that creates a hole through which we're looking at that image. So the vector shape creates the hole as opposed to black paint creating a hole. I can then grab my shape tool here, actually move the shape around just like this and show different parts of my layer by looking through that vector shape. Right click we can delete that vector mask just like before. Let's go up here do another one, layer, vector mask, and hide all. I'll go just a little bit fancier on this one. Go over here to our shapes, choose the custom shape tool, and let's look at our fish shape again right there. And I'll drag in a fish vector shape. There it is. So there's our fish. And then anywhere I place that fish onto the document, the fish acts as a mask. The vector shape of the fish acts as a mask and we can see through the vector shape into what's on that layer. And of course, as with the other layer, I can disable that to hide it again. We can still see the vector shape in there. I can use my vector tools to modify the shape any way I want to. And then I can enable that back again. So the nice thing about using the vector shape is if you like working with vector tools to create your shape, this is a great way to do it. Now the disadvantage of the vector mask over the layer mask is that layer masks can use gray tones to add transparency effects to the mask. You can't do that with a vector, vector mask. You're just doing straight shapes with a vector mask. But you have that ability here though to create real nicely shaped masks. Of course I could do the same thing with the if I wanted to do a fish shape that had a gradient in there what I would do is I would let me just demonstrate that for you, so to, not just describing that. I'm going to copy this layer, make a new copy of this layer. There we go. And let's hide that background layer. On this, let's just delete that vector mask. Let's create a new mask in here. Do a hide all like that. We now need to put in a white fish on this black mask and then put a gradation in that white fish. So let's go to our fish. It's still up here. I'm going to change the style here to no style. Let's just get rid of that. And then drawing in here with no style. Notice that this gives me a new layer up here. That's fine. I want to then convert this layer into a shape. So let's just go in here and Actually, not quite what I wanted to do. Let's just right click on this, rasterize that vector mask, and then let's rasterize our layer. And I'm not seeing what I want. Let's go back to our shapes, make sure we're on our fish shape, and let's set the style here to no style, just like that. I'm going to draw my fish shape again in here. There we go. Now, when you do this, it gives you a new layer up here. So I need to now convert this layer into something. So I need to rasterize this layer. So I'll just click on the tool here and click on our button right there. Convert it to a smart shape and then click again, right click, rasterize that layer. There we go. So now I have a shape, just a graphic shape rasterized on this in the shape of that fish. Now I need to convert this into a outline that I can use or into a selection. So I use my magic wand, click outside. That selects everything outside. Let's go back and invert that selection. There we go. I now have a selection in the shape of that fish, which is what I want. I can now hide that layer, come down here to my mask layer, 
and then using my colors here of black to white I can grab my gradient tool and then pull a gradient into that selection and there we go I have my shape that I've used my fish shape and then I have my transparency gradient as well so you can put gradients inside of one of these shapes it just takes a couple of steps to do it you have to make your vector your vector shape first and then convert that vector shape one way or another into a selection and you then can place your gradient into that selection but there you go that is working with let me just deselect that here get that out of the way there you go that's working with these different vector based graphics it's an easy way to come in and create a graphic or a, a mask using your vector tools so depending upon which one you want to use it really depends upon what you're more comfortable with and the effect you're trying to do one thing about the vector masks that you can't easily do in the layer mask is this ability to move this thing around so you may want to combine the two techniques together as I showed you in this this moment ago combine your techniques together to get the shape you want and then convert that over into a layer mask to get the masking effect that you want and then again to get rid of these masks just right click and delete I'm gonna leave these two up here now and we'll just I'll just save those layers so I have them in the file in case you want to look at that later on